I'm now going to take up the next session with uh, two leading experts in the OTT and MarTech domain. Let me introduce, uh, introduce uh, the panelists I have today. Uh, I have with me uh, Tarun Katyal, whom uh, I'm sure a lot of you in the Indian media advertising ecosystem know. He's a media veteran of, of over two decades. Tarun Katyal is the CEO of C5. In his current role, Tarun is responsible, as you know, for steering C5 steering Z5, India's largest and most comprehensive digital entertainment platform for language content towards gaining industry leadership position. As you also know, uh, Tarun has a varied and diverse background across India's leading media companies. He was last at uh, Big FM, where he was the founder, CEO, and CEO during his duration. He also set up Twink Big, the content incubator, and the big TV channels, Magic and Ganga. Tarun began, began his career with advertising agencies, but now, as you see, he's, he's a content advertising tech expert. He also worked with the Star Network, where he rose to uh, head the content and communications across the network in India. Uh, he also was instrumental in uh, uh, the record of accomplishment through successful shows like KBC. Uh, Apart from that, he was, you know, he was famous for launching Indian okay, Fear Factors and a lot of other shows in India. Welcome, Tarun, on board. Uh, glad you're here doing this with us. And as I mentioned, uh, Tarun is now uh, a part of Z5, which is India's leading uh, OTT network. Uh, I was just uh, going through some of the sub stuff uh, Z5 has been doing. And from what I understand in the last uh, three, four months, their uh, consumption has uh, shot up by almost 80%. 80%, uh, uh, during the lockdown period. They made aggressive investments in Z5 ads, ad tech. Uh, they also have a partnership with Airtel and Geo Fiber. And they are also launching very soon Hyper Shorts, which is uh, India's first ever fully homegrown short video platform. So all the best to you on that, Tarun. Uh, in addition to Tarun, uh, what we also thought was to invite a uh, leading uh, MarTech expert from uh, uh, from Europe, uh, Maciej Zawadinski is with us. Uh, uh, hi, Maciej. Hi, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, Maciej is an expert Thanks for having in me. And advertising technology and a founder of several, several successful companies. Uh, Maciej is also currently devoting his knowledge and skills to developing uh, Pivik Pro, a privacy-focused analytics platform and the perfect alternate, as they say, to uh, Google Analytics. He's also in the past led clear code uh, to its position as a world leading software house specializes, specializing in customer custom advertising and marketing technology. Thank you for joining us much if all the way from Poland. Uh, so thank you gentlemen for being part of this session. Uh, we have uh, people uh, tuned in already. Uh, and as, uh, as has been announced already, uh, the, the topic of what uh, we are discussing today is around the collapsing web banner and third party data while uh, shifting ad budgets to OTT. Before I get into, you know, the uh, detailed uh, thought points about uh, what's going to happen, let me ask you uh, a very elementary question. We've uh, seen over the last many years, uh, Google, Facebook have had a, you know, kind of duopoly when it comes to customer uh, attention as well as advertising money. Why don't you tell our, uh, both of you tell our viewers, what are the three big reasons? Why do you think over the next 12, 18 months, this money, the advertising money, as well as consumer attention is likely to shift from that duopoly to also uh, the third pillar, which is gaining currency very fast in India and outside India, which is the OTT ecosystem. Tarun, why don't we start with you? So uh, thank you, Nava, for a long introduction. Uh, I was almost embarrassed at the end of it. Um, thank you, uh, Maciej, for joining us from Poland. Uh, it's really good to have you around, and, and I hope it isn't uh, too early in the morning for you. Uh, so it's a good question, right? Where is digital advertising going? Uh, what is going to happen to independent publishers? What's going to happen to the big, large networks of Facebook and Google? For anybody to say that Facebook and Google are going to go away would be quite kind of very foolish, right? Uh, will they reduce their influence on, on digital advertising? Uh, maybe. Will other publishers come in uh, and come in with scale? I think definitely yes. A and why is that? Uh, I think for many years, the capability of segmented and targeted advertising, uh, the capability, capability of doing 
uh, good big data, having great ad servers, digital ad servers, being able to do a, a great consumer profiling 360 through a good CDP. Lied or was only a domain of the big tech, right? Which was Google and Facebook and, and a little bit of Amazon when they started their advertising program about a couple of years ago. But I think the democratization of technology uh, and the democratization of of platforms and their ability to attract users and users at scale is allowing for this paradigm to change, for this picture to shift. Um, platforms like ours and, and even others like Hotstar or many others are now over, you know, closing to 100 million or over 100 million users uh, with some significant amount of video consumption around some very quality content with a high amount of loyalty. And I think the picture started to change about two to three years ago when uh, most broadcasters in India and across the world realized that they couldn't let the OTT game be secondary and be played uh, by either syndicating content to platforms like uh, Netflix or, or Amazon or, or putting their content on a revenue share on platforms like YouTube. But they had to control their own digital destinies. They started building their own platforms, but once they built their platforms and they started to see some very scaled up consumption, they realized that they hadn't invested enough behind analytics and ad tech. And I think the last uh, 12 and the next 12 to 18 months, we'll see some significant investments and building up of independent networks on the base, on the back of, you know, partners like ClearCode and others in, in actually getting what they deserve and owning the end to end at tech pipeline for themselves. Right. Achay, you uh, work very, uh, you know, deeply in this entire audience measurement or rather audience journey measurement and the, you know, MarTech space. What is your sense globally? Also, a lot of media, traditional uh, legacy media companies are investing a lot in the OTT space. Disney just, you know, uh, pulled out all their content from Netflix and has launched their own uh, platform. What's your sense of what the future looks like? Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, uh, I think uh, I, I totally agree with what Tyron said. Uh, I want to add one point before I, I answer this question is that the very big advantage of OTT is creating these brand experiences. Like there is no ad blog, banner blindness, and they like, you know, ways that I will be distracted from uh, from seeing the the brand message. Um, so this is a big advantage. Where I see disadvantage and where what why there is so much investment into this space is that um, uh, the advertising on web or in mobile apps has been with us for decades uh, now, and uh, maybe for mobile apps not decades, but for web definitely decades. And the technology is very advanced today. Uh, there is a lot of attribution platform, segmentation and so on. We'll come to that probably uh, why some of these platforms will no longer work with the demise of cookies, but they are very advanced compared to what's in OTT. And there is a big investment into the, this creating these ecosystems where there is end-to-end uh, ad buying, uh, data uh, analytics, attribution, uh, for the OTT channel, uh, because basically we are building in a, in a matter of the last few years, everything that has been created uh, on the web for over a decade. So I see uh, there is a big need uh, because there is a big, uh, ad, uh, big uh, opportunity and uh, great inventory, great, great experience. But uh, we need to catch up with the technology uh, and some of the players like Z5 is already, all, are already doing or in the process of doing that. Uh, but there's a lot of legacy players, even in the US, that are uh, years behind. Uh, and they are starting to, to build this technology for the OTT. So, uh, good you uh, brought up this point about, you know, third party cookies, extin extinction of the third party cookies. So what happens, you know, how do you see the future of uh, audience buying and advertising on digital changing? And how does the OTT system uh, gain out of that? Give us some granularity. You know, what do you think will happen, say, in the next 12 months? How, how does the balance of power kind of shift? Mm -hmm. 
especially so, also given the fact that privacy laws are becoming very strict. In the world yeah, that, that, that's what, one point. So I think there are two uh, things that influence that. One is the regulatory space and not only what happened in Europe with GDPR, but also what's uh, happening in Brazil, what's happening in India, in other countries where the privacy laws get stricter and there is a, a limitation in what we can do in context of yeah. sharing the data between vendors. That's yeah. why you, I see that there will be a big reliance on first party data and some of the big publishers on web, like even New York Times announced that they will like no longer do the third party audience uh, uh, selling or buy or, or inventory selling. It will be all based on the first party data. Um, and uh, the OTT, has a big advantage uh, as by design, we know everything, like we, we, the users are identified. They log in with their like username or their telecom into the OTT platform. So they are identified. It's not like with web where we can lose the cookie when the user uh, blocks it or, or changes the browser. So. Uh, I think there, this is like by design a huge advantage of o OTT that we'll, we are dealing with primarily identified audiences and that's what all other channels are going uh, shifting to uh, uh, primarily on web where the cookies are used and, uh, and they will no longer be uh, relevant. What I see also is that uh, there is more interest in the first party data uh, technology. So CDPs in particular, yeah. uh, building the cust customer data platforms to uh, aggregate data across different sources that these organizations have. And I think, again, OTT has a big advantage that they can do great partnerships uh, with uh, various players, whether there are telecoms or whether there are other like internet providers or they are um, there are other partners that have data and having identified audience helps you to match this data with the partner and enrich your, uh, and, and your audience uh, data. And that, that is uh, a matter of like selling the uh, ad inventory at a high premium price versus selling it uh, unidentified users at a low price. Right. So let me st uh, stay on this point about data and hop, hop across to Tarun. Uh, Tarun, uh, these are interrelated things. You know, if you look at the large uh, uh, publishers, uh, non-OTT publishers, the Googles and the Facebook books of the world, they inherently require registration and hence their ability to, you know, mine that data because they know who exactly is using a Gmail and who's using the Facebook account. They've managed to build huge, you know, programmatic plays on top of this layer of data that they are primarily collecting directly from the users. OTT players, on the other hand, uh, have a mixed bag. So in cases where you have subscriber data, obviously people are paying and you know, they, are, they are kind of holding accounts. But there's a large number of users who are, who are consuming OTT content without really you know, registering and giving you access to that kind of data. So how do you think OTT players over the next say, 12 months can overcome this uh, you know, primary data deficit that currently uh, they have? because that also kind of means more, more earnings. The more the advertiser can map uh, the data, the primary data, the more uh, his confidence in uh, investing in the platform goes up. So you're right, uh, Naval. I think uh, OTT made a mistake when they launched that they allowed a lot more guest users onto their platform without registering uh, you know, directly with the OTT platform. So I'll tell you two or three things that OTT platforms did or shouldn't have done. One. We all allowed guest users to keep consuming video because we thought it was early stage uh, without having compulsory or mandatory registration. Uh, two, while doing the mandatory registration, we didn't take enough fields like age and gender and so on and so forth. Third, we allowed a lot more social logins on our platform, which uh, didn't give us enough data uh, pipeline from the social platforms like Google and Facebook. And all of this is something that we corrected over a period of time. I think you live to learn and learn to live. Um, so to, to help you understand a platform like ours now, if you watch uh, over five videos without being registered, uh, you have to go back and register. So it's mandatory registration uh, at one level. At the second level, uh, even if you were to come in and register through social, which is uh, because of convenience we still allow, which is Facebook and Google, we, you have to enrich your profile in terms of age and gender. 
and and it's even more important for us because increasingly uh, government laws and regulation around uh, content and around age and guard guardrails around that make it very important for us to get that data both date of birth as well as gender for us uh, then lastly i think uh, we've also all built a network of relationships uh, on data partnerships to so be able to enrich this first party data with other partners partners who have similar logins and we work with other loyalty programs we other work with other telcos uh, who are able to actually bring alive our data management platforms and much like uh, marchez was saying we now have a fairly big investment in building a consumer data platform which where not only our first party data and registered verified users flow in but a lot more uh, data partners who flow in their data uh, bases are their understanding and their consumption of the same users and we've been able to multiply that that those attributes and that profile in a fairly rich manner uh, and that investment continues to grow and grow so much uh, as you know india is a unique country uh, uh, to convert users into subscribers is far more tougher as compared to some other parts of the world and hence as tarun said a lot of the ott usage started as a sampling service to you know lower users in and keep the barrier of entry as low as possible not even ask them for basic details so what do you think like tarun was explaining what do you think are the ways that you know uh, now that there is a substantial chunk of user base and advertisers are looking at the platforms very seriously to invest in what are the ways in which you can we can sort of short circuit the process and jump over because you can't have now suddenly millions of people you know registering and sharing their data overnight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I think like uh, what Tarun mentioned about gated content and uh, forcing the users after they experience the the service to sign in is the the way that like it's a global trend even for non OTT content um, and uh, that's that's basically you know how you gain the identified users the moment you have identified users you can do much more in context of the data and what's most important you can collect bits of data over time and you don't lose it uh, in the cookie world like the moment that the browser clears the cookies you are losing all the history and here like the moment we, we don't have to collect all the data at once we can do it very slowly we can also build it based on the content consumption uh, over time how it changes we can do a lot of analytics based on that that will help us later to uh classify the users into audiences that will be uh, very valuable for the advertisers i was and uh, you know uh, sorry naval can i come in and i think the big advantage that ott players bring in uh, into the country is that advertisers are used to buying on some of their key market shows on uh, broadcast right but advertisers didn't know what the psychographics and what the other attributes of these users were the same users uh, and a fair amount of them migrate from watching on tv to watching on ott you now know them one at an n equal to one level that's right and two uh, you now know them far more than what you knew before which you knew them through a panel and you knew them through a panel into age and gender and so on and so forth but as more data flows in and as you grow to know them more and more your ability to get those many signals into the same set of users that you were doing through broadcast now on ott is far richer uh, a platform like ours which is becoming 360 degree in terms of being a super app we now have <coughs> hypershots coming and hypershots becomes almost quasi social right where uh, where you have far more many signals uh, because there's user generated content and people like and share and and display affinity to a certain kind of users or certain kind of story or certain kind of uh, you know even products and all of those signals keep enriching your first party data which is all uh, verified uh, through a single identifier so tell me that's very interesting the hyper locals point tell me something why don't you tell us a little more bit uh, about it especially how do you plan to dovetail user generated content into the existing content on the platform how will it work the synchronization so it it doesn't uh, really synchronize in that sense it's a separate uh, section within the app so it's much like a super app where you have right. different uh, uh, yeah different areas uh, but what we thought was really that you know for several years uh, the influencer game 
built this social uh, uh, platforms, right? And who were these influencers? These influencers were, were all these TV stars who, who, who are really on our shows for so many years, right? So all the 40 channels of the Z network and all the characters and actors within that actually build the entire influencer list in the country. A part of it, not all of it. And then there is Bollywood and there is sports and, and there are newscasters. And we thought that we had, we had access to so many of these. Their fans wanted to connect to them directly. And uh, the fans anyway came to consume their characters on our platform on a daily basis. Yeah. And we could extend that experience of fandom onto uh, a Hypershots platform. Also, uh, you know, all our reality shows allowed regular users to become superstars or, uh, you know, at least celebrities of their own. And this Hypershots platform will also funnel that talent into our, you know, our various reality shows and so on and so forth. So really, there were three uh, vectors that we were working on. One was fandom. One was fun, and we thought that there's a lot out there that you can play and play with music, play with dialogues and all that. And the last was factual, and we think that there is a lot of DIY content uh, in short form that is waiting to be done. And, right. and all of it had a great overlap with our existing audiences. And we thought that, you know, while audiences in India find it difficult to have too many apps on their phone, largely because of low memory, low real estate in, on the phones, one super app could do it all for them. Fantastic. Uh, let me just pick up an audience question now. Uh, uh, there's somebody who's, uh, who wants to know, would OTT overtake television or cinema in the next five years? I think that answer, that question has been answered in many research reports. But I'm not right. going to... Uh, <laughs> but I'm not uh, going to put my job out <laughs> Primarily a television company, which has been so far a television company. And the, <laughs> it is an anonymous attendee. Let me also tell you, I can't see the name on the screen. It's an anonymous attendee. <laughs> Why don't you tell us what is Pitch, Pitch Madison Report saying? Well, I mean, my sense is that uh, uh, in India, you know, like it's happened with mobile telephony, it's happened uh, so many times in media, things move on parallel tracks. So it's not like one thing takes over the other. OTT will grow at, at its own pace. Television penetration is still growing. You know, uh, a lot of companies have been very fast to uh, pronounce the death of print, but look at regional print. You know, it continues to grow at a healthy rate year after year. So I think a lot of learnings that we have from Western markets might not be exactly replicable in India. At least for the next five years, television will continue to grow. Obviously, the pace of growth uh, will be different because OTT's base is low. I was reading another report which said uh, over the next five years, OTT ecosystem is expected to grow 24% uh, compound annual uh, rate of growth, which is significant given the fact that the ad advertising market in the last four or five years has, has grown at what? A CAGR of 11, 12% give or take. So OTT yeah, will grow it. at 2x. And obviously... Uh, one of the components that will fuel the growth is also subscription monies, uh, which for television has also started coming in, if you see in the last five, six years, which was a very small pie, you know, before digitization and television started. So the simple answer is, I don't think anybody can really predict whether it will overtake cinema or television. But one thing is for sure, OTT will become a very, very large pie of the entire digital ecosystem, which will be large enough. Maybe it will be equal to TV in five years. That is certainly a possibility. This year, from what I understand, digital itself would have reached 17, 18,000 crores in India, which is from some one and a half billion dollars. But maybe because of COVID, the growth will be lesser. But in five years... Yeah, but one better. of the segments that will grow even this year, they say uh, even after all of this, possibly digital and digital video will possibly grow the fastest. Yeah. That's right. So let me come back to you. Uh, so you answered this much better than me. Oh, you... <laughs> I've learned from you, Tarun. <laughs> Let me hop back across to uh, uh, to Mache. You know, one of the things uh, uh, that we keep talking about, uh, Mache, is uh, data, you know, privacy of data. I think that's globally uh, a massive issue. In countries like India, how the data is going to be used. I was reading uh, today, actually, that uh, I think it's Germany that has uh, disallowed Facebook. A German Supreme Court has disallowed Facebook to mine user data for selling to third parties, right? And so I, yeah, why don't you tell us a little more? Uh, 
you you have a better idea about what's going on there. Sure. So I mean, uh, I think with Facebook is very interesting uh, case because um, they collect the user interactions, etc. So they have locations, almost everything that we do there. There is a lot of spending significant amount of time there. So. Um, the Supreme Court banned them from uh, selling to third parties, but what they say, they don't sell the data because they sell advertising targeted by the data and the data does not leave the ecosystem. Um, so there is still like, I think, uh, some uh, dispute over like uh, whether they are using it, like, in my opinion, they are using it for advertising, not for the purpose of like serving the user the content and using the service. So they are using it for advertising purposes and the user has to agree to that. But in their opinion, they are not sending it, they are selling advertising right. and they are not exporting the data outside of their, their ecosystem. Um, talking a bit more broadly about privacy, yes, it gets much stricter. And I think like the, this is the good thing, like the ad tech and marketing technology space just got out of control and we like the, the whole industry earns that, that they are now forced to adapt and there will be a lot of changes uh, regarding, regarding that. But it's not that you know, uh, we won't be able to, to track the users. We have to do it with the uh, certain uh, either consent or certain anonymization uh, so that we cannot target an indiv individual rather than audience, uh, but, uh, but it's not that it's end of the world for ad tech companies now. Like we see like even uh, ClearCode, the company I founded, sees the growth in the ad tech projects mainly because they have to adopt or there are new channels. Uh, there's a lot of investment into the first party space uh, compared to the third party data that it, it used to be for the last decade. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, not, not sure if you, if you want me to elaborate on anything else in, in particular here. Right. So Tarun, uh, there's a specific question for you. Uh, this is what kind of tools do you offer to the marketers to empower them to use your channel or your shows? So <clears throat> what we're developing now, um, while we have four ad, ad products, which is uh, Ad Vault, Amplify, uh, and we also have a big DMP called Infonomics, which we allow uh, marketers to set up their campaigns and, and set up their audience segments and so on and so forth. What we now work with ClearCode is to build out an entire self-serve platform, uh, which will allow and empower uh, marketers to be able to do almost everything themselves. Forget uh, setting up audiences and campaigns, but also do uh, biddable advertising, buy biddable advertising, right. uh, and to hold so also to be able to do optimization, waterfall analytics, um, and basically end-to-end -end optimization on their campaigns. So our entire vision is that, our, that the advertiser or the advertising agency will be fully empowered in every, in every way to be able to advertise on our platform. And it will have very low managed services or, or human intervention. Right, fantastic. We don't have uh, time left, so I'll ask one last question, which is also very relevant to the Indian market, uh, to both of you gentlemen. Uh, measurement in digital uh, has been uh, kind of a bone of contention for the last many years, unlike the legacy media, which has you know third party me measurement tools done by companies like Nielsen. In India, you have a bar for TV, you have a MRUC, uh, which does IRS, the readership studies. Uh, digital does not have any third party measurement tools. Do you think the time has come Tarun to have third party independent measurement tools? It will allow the industry to go at, grow at a much faster rate. So digital having said that digital is far more transparent in terms of data as compared to legacy media. But do you think if we have third party measurement at this point of time, it will help us jump the growth curve even faster? So there is, uh, so to let me correct you here, Naval. Uh, there is no single currency that measures everybody together, but there is measurement of individual platforms, which is third party. Right. Okay. So on our platform, we have Oracle's mode, which uh, measures view through rates. So how much of the advertising did anybody see? We also have Nielsen's DAR, 
uh, which gives advertisers an ability to see who saw an advertise who had saw an advertising which is what age what gender and whatever filters we decide to sell and they decide to measure so those two parameters already exists on most good quality platforms uh, but i think there is a need for all platforms to come together and build a single currency and i think that um, even you know at imai i am trying to work with almost all platforms to see if you know we can come to a consensus there is uh, obviously word uh, that is work that is happening at bark and ecamp there is work uh, that is happening at nielsen individually so yes there are platforms uh, there is conviva which is also trying to do something on the smart tv side collectively so there are lots of options and opportunities that, that are coming together and i can tell you with all my experience in this space it's not more than 18 to 24 months away we will find a solution to something like this right and people like mache are doing a lot of this kind of work through pivix so let him tell us a little bit mache why don't you tell us globally how is the third party independent data measurement uh, being tackled we know that so, google facebook are not on third party platforms they do yeah it. so i mean there are ecosystems like google and facebook does not lo- does not let independent measurement and yeah. there is a lot of controversy and uh, even lawsuits uh, uh, because of that uh, what i see is what i want to point out is maybe something different so uh, when it comes to independent measurement on uh, web for example when it comes to audiences this space will get uh, disrupted by the demise of cookies that we that we covered uh, earlier as well as by privacy laws because by tracking these users you share their information and there needs to be some new mechanisms developed and similarly to ott we have to develop some new currency and new systems uh, how to do it uh, in a privacy friendly way and at the same time so that we can compare apples to apples rather than have a, like right now like even with some leading platforms you have significant differences in kinds of uh, measurement and that has been always the case like with every time we go into integrating for example real time bidding platforms we see these discrepancies we get them down quite a lot but they are always there and that's because like different vendors uh have a, a different let's say currency of how how certain things uh, are being measured so uh, to sum up uh, there are still challenges ahead to to make it uh independent of the channel but we'll get there i i i'm sure that we'll get there uh globally as well brilliant uh we are, we are out of time and as you know we are Uh, this is a you know larger martech event and we have the next speaker already waiting so thank you to both of you gentlemen it's exciting i'm sure to be in the ott space it's a sunrise sector uh, while leg- legacy media is looking at many uh, confronting many many issues especially during the lockdown ott is a sector which is likely to continue to grow at a very fast pace but with the challenges of having technology and having more competition one of the reports i read said india alone has 95 ott platforms now and growing because you know every month one or two new ott platforms are launching so with that thank you to both of you uh, for spending your valuable time and we'll uh, try and take some of the conversation uh, offline thank you tarun thank you mache uh, rohel thank you thank you everyone Thanks. for joining us thank you thank you